trumpets sound, all the saints will be heaven bound. We will cross over Jordan wide, stop and view the other side, and we'll view those holy hills and the mansion he has built. Gonna be the first in line to see my name in the book of life. Yeah, yeah. In my robe of white, I will fly away to that land so fair. With my Jesus there, it will be so grand. When I get to that land, in my robe of white, I will fly away. Right, man. It's going to be a wonderful time when I get to the other side. See, my loved ones gone before we'll depart from them no more. We'll be walking on streets of gold, surrounded by riches untold. When I look on Jesus' face, I know he saved me.
And I told uh, last Sunday night, I kind of started looking at 1 Corinthians, and we shared uh, the first chapter of Corinthians, and the, Corinth the Corinth church is a problem church, just like all of us. We all got problems, and we find there one problem they had in chapter 1, they weren't giving God the glory. They were giving man the glory. And so Paul straightens them out and says, you're not to glorify man, you're to glorify God. And you know, whatever we say and do, he deserves the glory. And uh, so we come to chapter 2, and let me start reading. It says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, so that my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. You know, uh, I, I like to hear Brother Cody. I'm looking forward to having him come. But the fact is, you know what? Uh, it, that's not where we get the power. That's right. And Paul said, I didn't use uh, exciting words. I didn't use stories. I didn't use that. He said, but the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That's what we need, don't we? And that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We find, let me just jump down there to verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Verse, and also notice what it says, that we not know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but with the Holy Ghost teaching, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Says verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. We find that Paul here is trying to tell us, he first tells us when I came it wasn't me, and you know, uh, Paul, there wasn't anyone that I know in the Bible here that was more educated, had more of a Bible knowledge than Paul. Paul could have said, I've got a doctor degree, I've got all these degrees, I'm qualified. No, you know what Paul said? I didn't come, the only way I came was in the Spirit and the power of God. We find uh, he goes on and, and tells us the world is not doesn't understand the things that we have to say. You ever notice that? You try telling somebody about the Lord, or you try sharing things, and it's just like I, they don't know what we're talking about. Right. And Paul makes this statement in verse nine. He says, "But it is written, I have not seen or ear heard." neither have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Now, there is a great truth. There's some things about, many things about God I have a hard time understanding. And you can, you can scratch, you can, you, can, uh, you can rack your brain, and you'll never come up with it. The Bible said the secret things belong unto the Lord thy God. That's for him to know. It's not necessarily for us to know. In, in Job chapter uh, 37, let me read a verse for you here. It says in verse 5, God thundered marvelously with his voice. Great things doth he, which we cannot comprehend. It says, for he said to the snow, be thou on the earth. Likewise to the small rain and the great rain and strength. He could go on, there's many things it shares there. You know what? I don't understand how God spoke the world into existence, but he did it. Amen. Yeah, amen. And there's things I don't have to understand. And we find it says here in verse 9, again, there's some things that we don't understand, but it but 
and, that, and, that's, and that's true, but verse 10, it starts out, but God. But God hath revealed these things of them unto us by his spirit. I believe the church here had forgotten, taken for granted some of the great things that as a child of God we have and we know. And I find myself taking it for granted. You know what? We hear all the time when you got saved, God and I got over it. It ought to be just as exciting today. The, the thought that God would be willing to save you. Right. And so Paul here, and I really want to share this morning, what you should know that the world doesn't. There's some things that you know that that, that one, that neighbor, that lost one, they just don't know. But you and I know about it. We know it this morning. We need to, we need to bring into remembrance some of the things that God says, it, I have not here, it not heard, but God has revealed them to me. He revealed them to you. We, uh, it's kind of like a Christian that doesn't have these things. Maybe, I don't know why, I don't know why the furnace ain't working this morning. But I kind of got me an illustration. This morning I got here, and last night I tried turning it on. I thought, oh no, there's no heat, but it wasn't that bad. And so it'll be all right. We had a good, you know, big, good, good crowd here last night. It warmed up. And this morning I came over here and I flipped the button. And I, I got all excited. I heard the furnace kick in. And I started praising God. But then I kind of noticed, I don't know if it's really working. So I went down in the basement. And it's making a lot of noise. But you know what's missing? The fire. So you know what I did? I went to the top of it and go, boom! I don't think I put a dent in it. Apparently it didn't work. And I thought maybe if I just gave it a little hit, it'd get some fire in it. And you know this morning, I like that. I don't want to hit you. But I want the fire in you. Amen. Anybody need the fire in you? Amen. We can make a lot of noise. I can turn that little thing over there and click. Oh, yeah, it's alive. But we need a fire, don't we? Amen. And so, I don't know why, but maybe just for that illustration this morning, amen. Uh, oh, next Sunday we'll have heat. Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, there's some things that you and I, and I thought, what, what, what do I know? What is it? He said, but these things. And it says the deep things of God. These are deep. And I thought, well, is there a list somewhere? I need to find it. Now, you'll find it in here, by the way. But I thought, I didn't, I, there's no passage that lists all the things, the deep things of God that I know that the world doesn't know. And so I thought, well, how am I going to figure this out? I want to preach this. And you know what I thought? I'll just tell you what I know. As a child of God, you ought to know something. Yeah, amen. You know something that the world doesn't know. And so, now I'm sure there's many other things, but there's a few things, amen. And let me turn over to Isaiah chapter 64. By the way, when Paul says, but as it's written, he's quoting Isaiah uh, chapter 64, verse 4. It says, for since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither have the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waited for him. Jump down to verse 6. Along with that, it says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, uh, like the wind, have taken us away. You know, if I, as I thought, I, I just thought about this this morning. I added it to my list. You know what I know? I'm unclean. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I take that for granted. Much of the world doesn't realize they're unclean. That's right. They think they're okay. Exactly. You know how, how they think they're okay? 
I know oftentimes I, I'm not very good. Maybe you're good at it. My wife's very good at washing hands. She learned all the, she learned, and even my daughter, I remember she took a class on how to wash your hands. If you're a nurse, you, you, there's a certain way you have to wash your hands. Well, I know how I come in. I come into the first sink I sing right there, kind of like this, this, and wipe it on the towel. And uh, you know what? And it had been a few times, and I remember my girls when they were at home, they go, Daddy, did you use soap? Uh, you know, their mama trained them good. And uh, so sometimes I didn't clean. You know, sometimes we think we're clean enough. I know I'm an unclean thing. My righteousness, my goodness, is just like a filthy rag. Yeah. Once the world thinks their goodness is good enough. But you know what? I'm glad I know that's not true. I'm an unclean. I'm a sinner. Amen. In Romans chapter 7, let me read for you. Paul is stating this. He's talking this about himself. He said in verse 18 of, uh, of chapter 7 of Romans, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Amen. He knows that. For the will, the will is present. I want to do right is what he's saying. Hmm. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. You know, that's me. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, I do it sometimes. Now, if I do that, I would not, it is not more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, a warring against the law of my mind, and bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Notice what he says in verse 24 about himself, Oh, wretched man that I am! Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You know what he says? I like verse 25. He says, I'm unclean. I'm a wretch. I, my, I, my flesh, it ain't no good. And he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself shall serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. We find here... You know what I know this morning? I'm unclean. But you know I'm glad it don't stop there. I just want to tell you, you know what else I know? I'm saved. Amen. Amen. Anybody know that this morning? Amen. Don't get over it. Get excited about it. I'm saved. The very next verse in that Romans it says, here's what he said. He said, Who oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me? He said, Oh, Jesus Christ will. And verse chapter 8, verse 1 says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation. <laughs> Amen. To them which are in Christ Jesus. And the world thinks it's foolish. Now the world thinks it's foolish, thinking, well, I'm unclean. Oh no, I'm, I'm pretty good. They think it's foolish. <coughs> you tell somebody that's not saved, well, I'm saved. Yes, yeah, sure you are, yeah. Nobody knows that. They think it's foolishness. I've got news for you. I know I'm saved. Yeah. yeah. Hope you know you're saved this morning. Yeah. It's not something you got to, well, I'm gambling, and I'm just, well, I hope when I get to heaven, I hear folks all the time, I heard a man went out the door last night. I said, all we can do is hope that we're okay. When we get... I thought, I don't know. I needed to stop him. Kind of asked him really what he believed. I know. Isn't it wonderful to know that? Amen. Amen. I know I'm saved. The world thinks it's foolish. But you know what? The Bible tells me I'm justified. Yeah. Amen. Justified in what? In Christ. Amen. Amen. Woo, amen. I'm glad there was a day I confessed him. Yeah. Knew I was in trouble. Found out he could get me out of trouble. And praise God, he took care of it. Yeah. The world thinks it different. They don't think we, you can know. 
I like, you'll find there all throughout the Bible, you'll find Paul, we won't say, he says, for we know that in this body, this body we haven't dissolved, we have in heaven, we've got a place, amen. He said, I'll be absent from the body. You know what he said? I'll be present with the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Sound like he knew something. That's right. The world don't know that. That's right. Ain't it good to know that this morning? Amen. Amen. Woo! Praise God, it feels good. Feels good to know that. Paul's reminding the church. He's trying to remind him some things and that maybe they just take for granted. But praise God, or maybe they just forgot it. They forgot the excitement about it. Praise God, we know. You know, along with that, I know I'm forgiven. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the world thinks in order to be good enough, you have enough good in your life to offset the bad. That ain't going to work. Nope. You don't have enough good to offset the bad. There's one, though, that forgives. Amen. And it feels good to be forgiven. You know, along with that forgive, forgiveness, you know, there's a uh, conviction. I know when I ain't right. Anybody know when you're not right? Yeah. The world don't know it. I know it. When I do something wrong, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit tells me, ah, that was wrong. Right. But the Bible says, if we confess our sins, He's faithful yeah. and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. I've said this many times. I wish it said cured from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Anybody cured from all unrighteousness? No. But he can be cleansed. Amen. He washes it away. The Bible says from the far as east and from the west, he's removed our transgressions from us. Amen. Praise God. There is one that can take that filthy rag and cleanse us. Amen. Paul said he was the chief of sinners. Yeah. But he was also forgiven. Amen. There's many think I'm too bad. There's all kinds. Of, some folks think they're too good. There's another category. Things I'm just too bad for God to save them. I've got good news for you. You can't be too bad. That's right. That's right. We're all too bad. Amen. We're all in that category. Yeah. We went to a yard sale here this week, and we met somebody, and and, uh, and they they went to a church down there by Mem uh, uh, I think it's Memphis somewhere, and uh, he said the preacher used to be a chaplain, and they said now they've had some people in the front row. He says, oh, they look like a rough crowd, and she said, you know what? And she, I like what she said. She says, you know what? We're all the same. Yeah. <laughs> We're all just sinners. Yeah. We're all in the same category. We're all headed for a bad place. But praise God. Amen. Boy, I'm glad I know I'm forgiven. Amen. Don't it feel good? Amen. Boy, I, you know how I feel about that forgiveness? I'm kind of like Paul there. Sometimes I know I'm supposed to do something, but I don't do it. Anyone ever that way? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I know I shouldn't do it, and I do it anyway. And you know what I? You know I, I do. I'm constantly dirty. I, my hands get dirty all the time. My wife always looks, boy, you need to clean that and do that. And you know what I do every time I, I run to the faucet and just water. And you know what? Every time I go, it seems to be there. Now there might be a time the water gets turned off. Oh well. But you know what? There's a fountain that we can come to. Amen. He says he's faithful and just to forgive us. He's faithful. It's always there for us to get clean. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You know what I know I'm saved. I'm forgiven. <laughs> hey, you know what I know? I know about prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody know about that? Amen. Amen. Isn't it something wonderful, praise God? That's talking to God. You ever talk to folks in this I'll pray about that. And you know, everyone's got different ideas. Some think that's just foolishness. I want you to know prayer is not foolishness. The right. Bible says, call unto me and I will answer thee. Amen. Prayer is real. I know about prayer. 
I've shared it recently in one of my tale about uh, where God has answered my prayer without a shadow of a doubt. Amen. Only God could intervene. I have a God that's able to do that. Amen. There's, you know, there's power in prayer. The Bible says I can do all things through who? Christ. Christ. Amen. That's in me. You say I can't, but God can. He can supply all your need. He's a provider when it comes to prayer. Whatever need you have, you can call unto Him. Praise God. Isn't it good to have prayer? The Bible says to humble ourselves. And you know, we've got to humble ourselves sometimes and pray. Sometimes we're too stubborn and too honorary to ask. We need to humble ourselves. And the Bible says, and it says to casting all our care upon Him. I think we just, sometimes we just come like this and it's still there. You ever do that? Ooh, still there? Says, task and give it a throw. Amen. Praise God. He's able to take care. I know about prayer. It's good to talk with him. Amen. The world thinks it's foolish. Paul says, what do you know that the world doesn't know? I know about prayer. Praise the Lord. And you know what comes along with that? I know about peace. You know prayer bring? Peace. Anybody know about the peace of God? Yeah. The world's looking for peace. They're trying to find it in things. They're trying to find it in a career. They're trying to find it in a relationship. If I just had a relationship, boy, I, I mean, I, I'd just be whole. That won't make you whole. I need, I need more money. That'll make me whole. That won't make you whole. I'll just go the other spectrum and they, they think they gotta have a, a drug or they need something to, to keep them to make them feel better. I'm glad to tell you what, I know about the peace of God. Amen. I tell you that right there, I just get you excited. Amen. You know what we do? We take that for granted. Yeah. Not everyone has that out there. Sure. Much of the world doesn't have that peace. But you know what? I got it. You know, uh, a lot of times maybe we don't know, uh, you know, that, that peace covers my past. Sometimes I bring up my past. Man, I blew it. I wish I wouldn't have done that. I can't get it out of my mind. But you know what? There's a God that took care of that past. Yeah. Woo, aren't you glad for that? He gives you peace about the past. He'll give you a piece about the present. <laughs> so be careful for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and with the peace of God, it says. In 1 Peter 1, verse 5, 8, he talks there about, and boy, I'm glad about this. You know, it's good to know you're saved, but it's even better to know that you're still saved. It says I'm kept yeah, by his power. Anybody know that? Yeah. I didn't always understand it, but praise God, I'm glad to tell you what now I know about that blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Isn't it good to know these things? Mm -hmm. The world doesn't know them. Paul said the church ought to know these things. Yeah, they don't understand the things of God. It said in verse 10 again, but God has revealed them to us. Know all about the peace of God. Thank you, Lord. You know what I also learned? I, I know about the love of God. Yes. Whew. Now I don't think we really. I know. I actually I got to say I know a little about the love of God. <laughs> Amen. It's amazing God's love. The only reason I know about the love of God, and the only reason I know about all these things, is because of the Word of God. By the way, the Word of God told us these things, and we can claim it. You know how we know these things? By faith. I believe I'm saved. Why? Because of the Word of God. Amen. I believe I'm forgiven. Why? Because of the Word of God. I believe there's a peace. Praise God. They give me a peace. Amen. The Word of God does. Do you know what? Jesus loves me. This I know. Why do I know? Because the Bible told me so. Aren't you glad he told us that? He didn't have to tell us that. Amen. For God so loved the world. That's you. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know what? 
I know about that love, though, more than just a song. Don't you? Yeah. He loves me. That's deep. That's a deep thing. We sing, Jesus loves even me. I think we sang last night. He loves even me. Me. I don't deserve it. The Bible says nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Amen. Nothing. There's so much of the world, they don't understand that. In fact, is, I, if, if, if I dwell on that, I think God don't love me no more. Surely he doesn't. But that's not what God says. He says to you right now, I still love you. Isn't that a good knowledge? We've got a world out there, I think they give up, they no one cares for me, no one loves me. I'm going to tell you, my Lord loves you. Well, we know a lot of things. I can look at all kinds of verses, other places, but I, I, I know there's, there's many things. You know what I know about this morning? I know about His grace. Anybody know about His grace? Yes. Amen. Well, how do you know that, Brother Brad? How do you know about His grace? I'm still here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't deserve to still be here. I don't deserve to still be living. How many times have I failed Him? Fail time and time again. How many times have I gone to the fountain of water for a cleansing and said, Lord, forgive me again, 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 again? Amen. Yeah. And you know what he does? He says, Okay. Amen. <laughs> Woo, amen. That's grace. Mm -hmm. It's not something I deserve. It's grace. And we sing amazing grace. It just gets sweeter to me all the time. I'm fearful that many sing the song I've shared so many times. They don't, they don't understand that grace. They're still thinking, it's amazing me. I'm doing pretty good. I've really come out of this. I've done that. Amazing me. Amazing works and all. It's all His grace. Boy, I've not been zapped. Thank you, Lord. You know about grace this morning? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Just a couple more here. You know what I, as I dwelt on this a little bit this week, I know about His presence. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's one thing to know you're saved. It's one thing to be cut dry and won't forgive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I praise God. I know about His presence. Amen. His presence is real. Now, if you want to get folks to really think you're losing, He says, well, the Lord is with me. He spoke to me. Boy, you're a... Uh, you know that. He's real. Amen. He's not in the grave. Right. right. He lives. Amen. He lives for us. Amen. The last words that Jesus said to his disciples is the last verse in the book of Matthew. It says, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world. He's here. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, Paul reminds the church, says, uh, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth where? In you. Anybody know about his presence? Boy, yes. oh, hallelujah. You know what? Uh, sometimes you can be around folks that are downers. You ever been around folks that are downers? You get around them and think, good, not us feeling good, and then I met them. <laughs> <laughs> then there's folks that are just bubbly. Oh, that encouraged me. I'm going to tell you what. There's one that dwells in me, his presence, and it's uplifting. Yeah. He sets me straight. I know about his presence. I talk with that one. What kind of person are you when you're with someone and you don't talk with them? You don't really think they're present. Be like you and your wife or, 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 or brother or whatever. You're there going somewhere in your car all the way. And you, oh, are you there? He's there. His presence is for him to talk with you and you to talk with him. Praise God for his presence. Amen. And you know when his presence really shows up in my life? When I'm down. Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord. Mm. Amen. He's the one that gives me the highs. But when things aren't going right, it's hard to comprehend it, and it's hard for me to... I'd like to, I like to, to, to give you a glimpse. I'd like to give you experience the presence of God. There's times where you just don't know where to go, you don't know what to do, and you're just down and out, and you know what shows up? He does. Woo! Praise the Lord! Just when I need Him most, He shows up. Boy, I'm glad. I tell you, no, let's not take that for granted. It's wonderful. I tell you, this thing being saved is wonderful. His presence. Lastly, you know this passage, John chapter 14, it starts out, I like the words it starts out in John chapter 14. It says, let not your heart be troubled. <laughs> you know what I know? He's coming for me. Is he coming for you? Amen. Praise the Lord. Be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Amen. And receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. I know he's coming. Now, I don't know why. Uh, he may just come and take me. You know, I just might be one day, I just, I don't know, we don't know him, but one day we're all going to die. True. Right. But you know, when I die, I'll be after the body and he's going to take me. Amen. Woo, ain't it good to know that? Amen. He's coming for me. Now, I'd like him to come in the rapture. I'd like to hear that trumpet blow. I'd like to hear winds about the clouds, amen. He's coming in a cloud, amen. And praise God, I'd like to see that cloud. And praise God, he says, come up hither. Woo, I'm going. You know, church, we got some things as a child of God that ought to get us excited. We know. All well, the world thinks it's foolish. But we know. I know I'm saved. Amen. Amen. I'm forgiven. There's a peace. He loves me. There's grace. My prayers are answered. Amen. I'm, I know about his prayer. Praise God. This is this is here is just for a short moment. One day he's coming for us. What do you know this morning? You know what? Even as you know things, you can know them better, can't you? My Lord wants you to know it better. He wants you to have assurance. He doesn't want you to have doubt. As you go through this next week or whatever it is, praise God, there's one that lives. Amen. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you. Lord, the church needs to remind. He's not talking to lost folks. He's talking to folks that say they're saved. He said, these are some things that you ought to know. And Lord, it excites us when we dwell on it. We be reminded. Sometimes we just take it for granted. Well, I've got a peace. Yeah, I do. No, it's a, it's a supernatural peace. We've got one that loves us, and the Lord of good. It feels good to be loved. Lord, we, the Bible says, we, we, one pleaded, they said, would you increase our faith? Lord, help us to increase our faith. That we might know even more some of the deep things that you have for us. How much easier, how much better do we go through this life knowing these wonderful truths that you've given us. Lord, you know our heart this morning. You know the needs that we have. Help us, Lord, to humble ourselves and to cast it and to give it to you. Have your way, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. you got to humble yourself. Get that flesh, get that pride out of the way. Say, I, I don't know if I know these things. I want to know them. Or maybe I know him and I want to know him better. I want his presence. I want that peace. He wants to give it. Give it to him. Call unto him. Oh, the world don't understand it. We're different. 
praise God, we know some things. We know these wonderful things that God has revealed to us through His Word. Oh, Lord, help us. I want the world to see we know something. Others need to know there's a God that loves them. Others need to know there's one that is willing to forgive. Others need to know about that grace. We don't deserve it. But He's given it. It's for the take. Let not your hearts be troubled. Do you believe in Him? He's coming back. Woo, yeah. The world needs to know. Our children need to know.